Hello and welcome to Fine Wine or Milk. In this new video series, I will be bringing back some classic archetypes from modern's past that uh, maybe have not aged particularly well. So because of that, we're going to try to bring them to 2022 and make some updates, some tweaks here and there and see whether they're still, whether they still have something left to give to the format. And of course, trying to figure out whether they have aged like fine wine or aged like milk. And we're going to get started with a very, very beloved archetype in Cobblade. This is a deck that took over standard and completely dominated the format for a long time. And it combined uh, some of the most broken cards at the, at the time. That is Squadron Hawk. Yes, Squadron Hawk was considered to be a very good card. Uh, basically, what the, the Hawk does is you would play it and you would get a bunch of 1-1 one, one flyers. And then what you do is you have Stoneforge Mystic. So you would... Uh, basically attach any random sword or anything to your squadron hawks and then go to town with the evasive creatures. So Stoneforge Mystic, Ghost Finds, Sword of Fire and Ice, Batter Skull or Cadra Complete. This is going to be your package. And the idea is to try to equip on one of these two or squadron hawk and go to town. Uh, obviously, you know, you can equip your, your swords to anything. So, um, you know, any sort of creatures, uh, Stoneforge Mystic, even Solitude or, uh, you know, Castle Undervale token. All of those are valid things to equip and beat down our opponents. We're also playing Jace Domain Sculptor. Jace obviously lines up very, very well with Squadron Hawk because you get to play your Hawk, uh, get three copies of it, then you brainstorm, you put the Hawks back in, and then you cast one of your Hawks, and then you get to draw some extra cards out of the deal. So uh, some very nice synergy there. And we're also playing uh, four copies of Teferi Time Raveler. This card is just very, very good right now. I was thinking whether to go three and three between Teferi and Jace, but we're playing 24 land deck. This uh, this kind of deck turns to be a little bit more low to the ground than control versions. So uh, 24 felt like a better amount of lands. And uh, Teferi kind of lines up a little bit better with the curve when we're trying to do, you know, two into three into four. Uh, Teferi smooths things out. Obviously, it's very, very powerful against the very, very uh, prominent Cascade decks that we see in the format right now in Living End and Rhinos and stuff like that. So, uh, of course, we're running things out with uh, Counterspell, Spell Pierce, and Archmage's Charm. These are just some of the most powerful blue cards in the format. And uh, some very good removal as well. We have Prismatic Ending, which we are going to be able to Prismatic Ending for X equals 3 if we really want to, thanks to our one of Rogan Trion. And a brand new printing from, I guess it's not brand new anymore, but from, from Neon Dynasty. Mind of the World Light, it's a card that uh, even personally I undervalued when going over the spoiler. I thought it was going to be a solid, just like a mediocre card, but it ended up being super solid. I feel like uh, most people really undervalued uh, the, the fact that it can actually exile lands. So if your opponent tries to attack you with the Ink Moth Nexus uh, while playing Hammer, you can get rid of it. And the same thing is true for Ursa Saga as well. So we're going to try to see whether this deck still has some steam. When we go to the sideboard, uh, we have just, you know, who is who of good sideboard cards. We have Sanctifier on deck, Rest in Peace. And all of these cards are very, very good against Ravira decks and uh, Mono Red, uh, stuff like Burn in particular as well. Mystical Dispute for the Blue Mirrors, S Spreading Seas against Saga decks, against Tron and stuff like that. Spell Pierce and Fluster Storm against... Uh, Control decks against combo decks, excuse, excuse me. Uh, Supreme Verdict against your creature decks of the format. That is, of course, your hammers, your uh, things like that. Engine Explosives also against Hammer, also solid against some monkey decks. And finally, Sword of Feast and Famine. Uh, this is mostly against green decks, uh, namely Primeval Titan strategies. So we're going to see how everything lines up here. Uh, if you enjoyed the content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're interested in coaching or you're interested in me playing any deck of your choosing, you can find all of the information you need in the description of the video down below. And uh, let's see how this age, how this deck has aged, shall we? Here we go with round number one, and we find the dreaded No Lander. So we're going to ship this hand, obviously. Uh, this one looks a little bit better. Okay, uh, one uh, synergy that I forgot to mention is the fact that with Squadron Hawk, your Solitudes are basically free. Um, do I want to bottom a land here? Like, I'm definitely keeping this hand. Now the question is, what do we bottom? I think I'm just going to bottom the Solitude. Alternatively, I could bottom the Squadron Hawk, but I think I'm just going to bottom the Solitude. Hawk seems better against uh, like Ragged Man and stuff. Steam Vents. Hey. Oh, Hard Evidence. Okay. Um, so we're playing against the Creativity Combo deck. 
play my lands, there you go. And if my opponent slams Ren and Six, I'm probably gonna have to counter it, even though I'm not super excited about doing it. Okay, opponent passes, so I'm gonna save the spell peers for um, the fairy time raveler. I am finding enough lands, so I think that I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to this corner hawk for now. Okay, so my opponent's gonna fire an ice here, but kind of don't care because we're holding up spell peers anyways. <laughs> So that's fine. We did draw the counter spell, which is funny, but I think we're doing fine here. So if they slam the fairy, we're just gonna pierce it. Yep. Get out of here. Get out of here. And I'm gonna play. Uh, I was gonna play Ottawara, but now that we drew the basic island, uh, definitely gonna hold up Archmage's turn this turn. Next turn, we're gonna be able to counter spell plus one hawk. Red and six. Yeah, I'm gonna Archmage's charm here. <clears throat> Seems worth charming there. Um, so let's play castle, and we're gonna go hawk, hold up counter spell. Gonna find three of these bad boys. Boom, look at that value. Look at that value. Basically ancestral, right? Opponent draws a card. <sighs> I don't think things are looking super well for us just yet. Opponent just slams it, okay. So I assume that they have another copy, right? So I guess I'm gonna play Mystic Gate and I'm gonna attack with the Hawk and I'm gonna say go. And now if my opponent, if my opponent attempts to do the same, I can march one of the tokens, then I can Jace the Mile Sculptor. Ugh. So at least I can make a castle token. I mean, this is obviously not great, right? But um, make token. Okay, so now what we can do is we can just play one of these things. We're not drawing super well, to be honest. We're not drawing super well here. A little bit scary. Bolt. Okay. Am I gonna have to add a war next turn? Just add a war the Jace, which feels awful. <laughs> it would be great to draw my own Jace. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Yeah, the Jace is giving them a lot of value. Up to four cards in hand now. The jamming? The fairy. So I think I'm just gonna do this here. We're gonna kill the token. Particularly crab token is very annoying. And then I'm gonna kill the other token. Now the fairy's gonna resolve and they can plus or just minus immediately. Oh, they have ran too. Yeah, that's a beating. Yeah, obviously not having found. Hmm. I'm gonna pass the turn here. This is not looking very good, but the plan, I guess, is to end step, make it token. The issue is that my opponent can instant speed. Activate. Yeah, I, I'm just. I, I don't think I can beat this at this point. I don't think I can beat this anymore, because my opponent can instant speed uh, the, the creativity. We do get, however, to see what they find of the creativity. So at least we got that going. Our own Jace. Okay, I doubt that this is gonna matter. Opponent has access to remand, a bunch of other things. Prismatic Canning gets rid of that. Definitely sending back one of those, and I guess I'm sending back the other one too. I wanna hold on to this other war, I think. Um, hmm, yeah, I think so. Gonna have to chill for this turn. I'm just gonna kill the Ren and Six, because it's gonna be too much with the with the Jays. I still think that we're not in good shape. I th still think that my opponent would need to be very, very unlucky in order to not win this game. They do get Water Door of the Mine, so I imagine we're gonna get creativity here. And particularly my opponent not countering Jays, but at least we get to know whether they are on the Archon version or they are on the... Okay, so they are on the Ember Pool version. Okay, so uh, Dispute seems good. Spell Pier seems good. Feast and Famine seems reasonable. Um, March is probably bad, and I think I have one too many equipment, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of Caldra. This is okay to answer Planeswalkers, even though it's not great. Solely to answer Sembrakul, so I kind of have to have it. Um, maybe Fire and Ice is bad. Both of the swords seem okay. Maybe Batter Skull sucks. Nah, Batter Skull's fine. I'm just gonna cut Jace. Okay, um, yeah, this hand looks pretty solid. Some pretty good interaction here. That's very good. Yeah, this is a very strong start. 
And I think I'm gonna suit up with um, one of the swords. I think it's gonna be Feast and Famine. I think Feast and Famine is better than, than Fire and Ice here, because it allows me to play both offense and defense. Fire and Ice seems fine, but then I'm, I'm gonna be tapping out at least the first turn. Interesting. Okay, play my land, say go. We don't have to do anything here. My opponent's attempt to fire ice anything. I can just put the, okay. I'm just gonna fluster this. And I'm gonna fetch for Hallowed Fountain right now so that my opponent cannot get me with an instant speed thingy. If my opponent Teferi is here, I think I pierce. As is, I'm gonna have to tap out here, unfortunately, meaning that if my opponent does have fire, another fire ice or lightning bolt or something, they're gonna get me. And they should do it right now. If they do have it, they do have it. Okay, there we go. That's not the end of the world. <laughs> That's not a very good draw, however. So now we need to draw literally anything that we can put this sword on. So oddly enough, Squadron Hawk would be my best draw, I think. Like if I draw Hawk, I think we're in business. And I think I'm gonna fetch Squadron Hawk, land. Land is not great. Next turn, I'm probably gonna do it though. And I'm just gonna play Batter Skull and cross my fingers. Hope that it works. Definitely relevant to my point in Druler Island. Also just realized sort of where I can bounce Emrakul, cool, which is kind of wild. Ugh. So I'm just gonna get Godlike Veil of Summer. The good thing is that we get Veiled here, but now Colonnade kills the Jace, unless my opponent pluses. They do plus. And they plus on themselves, which is a good play, for sure. Uh, we can't ending for four. So I, I think I'm just gonna out Aura here. And I'm gonna hope that we draw something. It's pretty brutal. So now we're gonna resolve Batter Skull. My opponent can, huh. I'm thinking about whether do I want a Prismatic Ending the Dwarf. I think I do. And the reason being, obviously, my opponent can't combo me here. But now if they play Jace and they minus on the Batter Skull, then I can attack the Jace. Yeah, our, awkward, our, our draw has been a little bit awkward both times. If they have Jace into, into Fire Eyes, just gonna just gonna flip the table here. Ren. Okay. So this means we kill the Jace. And we get to hold up dispute. I think I'm supposed to kill Jace instead of Ren. Ren kinda did its damage already by getting back that land. Mm-hmm. Man, that Veil of Summer was such a beating. I doubt that they have too many removal spells, and the fact that if we had been able to untap with that with that Stoneforge mistake, I think that this game looks very different. Draw two, then discard two, destroy target artifact. You got me. Interesting that they blow up the batter's skull instead of the sword. It feels like I would be more threatened by the sword than the batter's skull. The batter's skull is just so clunky, right? Ugh. Yeah, I have to go after Ren. Just know where I want to be. Yeah, this isn't looking great for us. Put in pluses Ren, get back Tarn. Ren is just drawing them so many cards. They could be bad though. They could technically be bad cards. It's not a bad card. Emrakul. We do have answers to that though. So, Solitude is what we want to draw here. Or Jace. Either Solitude or Jace should be fine. Um, if I don't find Jace, I lose the game. So if I don't find one of those cards, I lose the game. So because of that, I think it's worth to fetch fetching too thin. Uh, that's uh, that's not it. So we lose. All right, pretty brutal, pretty brutal first match. But uh, this, I, I when I I tried this deck out, I was surprised at how good this this deck played against uh, control decks. I think that this deck has a very very good matchup against control decks. So I'm not surprised that we kind of got got rolled there. We'll see. We'll see you next round. Okay, here we are, round number two. We have solid mana, we have a removal spell, and this is already a multi six. I think with my curve being this clunky, I'm gonna ship this. Yeah, this is much better, and we can bottom the Kaldra. We're on the play, so we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to go turn two Stoneforge, which seems pretty solid. Opponent goes for Rafine's Tower. No idea what that could be, but it's a terrible draw. I think I'm gonna go for um, Kaldra here. 
I guess if my opponent is playing the... I think I'm gonna go for Battle Skull, actually, because if my opponent is playing the, uh, the stupid... Um, what's the name of the deck that everybody's playing right now? The Calibrated Blast deck? Then having access to Battle Skull as a way that I can gain life is going to matter. And they're indeed playing the, <laughs> the Calibrated Blast deck. Everybody's so high on this deck right now, and I just don't get it. I mean, I guess it, they just, it just got the new card, so that's why people are high on it, but I don't know. Um, the deck seems really stupid to me. People like what they like, though. Pitching a squadron hawk like a champion. Kill your thing. Now what do you got? Okay, so mountain go. I'm just gonna put a batter skull in play here. And my opponent's gonna have to use a trigger to kill this batter skull. Wait, what? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, not that I can do anything about this. Counterspell, that's a pretty good draw. So, I think I just passed the turn. I don't think Squadron Hog is really going to improve my clock, so it's just a card that I can pitch to Solitude, and just having access to the counter spell means that even if my opponent has like a Throws of Chaos here. Um, okay, counter spell blast. So now we have to draw another another counter spell here. Chase the Mind Sculptor. So here's 5, I go up to 12. I play Squadron Hog, get some birds, and now we cross our fingers. So even if my opponent flips 15, I can technically solitude my own uh, my own token there. I imagine I'm dead. Though I guess I think whiff. Like if they find if they reveal a caliber calibrated blast, I I probably die. I think. Yeah, and here it's correct for my opponent to get back the throws of chaos as opposed to flashing back the calibrated blast. And the reason for that is that now they have less whiffs in their deck. So they flip a 15. So I have to solitude my own batter skull. I don't think this is a winning strategy, by the way. Like, I think I'm just dead, but... Counterspell. No counterspell. Okay. No counterspell means we're actually dead. <clears throat> kind of unlucky, honestly, that we... That we drew a prismatic ending. I imagine both cyborg things get a lot better for us. Like, I'm gonna be bringing in re both Rest in Peace and the, the two-drop guy which are gonna make it so they don't get the flashbacks for free, the throws of chaos. Like it just limits so much the amount of things that I actually need to answer. And they don't have very much in the form of interaction, so that should make things easier for me. <laughs> they actually flip the blast, but we died. Okay, so bring these in, bring these in, get these out. Um, this is probably better than that. I'm gonna cut some hawks, and I guess bring in disputes over Jace's. Is Solitude even good? Maybe Solitude is just bad. Bring in Jace instead. March kills their lands. Not, killing the lands is probably worse than Solitude, right? Explosives doesn't do anything. Might start spreading seas, so we get to draw a card, I guess. Okay, this hand looks pretty good. I'm gonna keep this one. So turn one, Triumph, turn two, Stoneforge. And what are we doing? I think we go for Kaldra. We can go for Kaldra or we can go for sort of Feast and Famine. Feast and Famine is pretty exciting actually. And then we're gonna go land this coming turn. And following turn we're gonna get to do a bunch of things. Play land, say go. I guess this is bad against Boseju. Should have probably thought about Boseju. Boseju does mess me up a little bit here. <clears throat> yeah, maybe I shouldn't have Boseju. I wonder if my opponent's gonna blast here. I really hope they do. I think if they blast here, I probably just win. So we're gonna fluster here. Now that's gone. Now we're gonna that's nice. That's a that's a way to that's a that's a way to hit to, to play a land and be able to do this without having to shock myself. So now they have to discard the card. Embercool. That's funny. And I think because of Throws of Chaos, I'm just gonna do this instead of playing Jace. Just gonna plus. Maybe I should have maybe I should minus because um because I can draw spell pierce or fluster. Okay. Again, I can get Boseju here, but I think this is worth doing. And I guess I'm gonna look one deeper. So we minus the fairy, then we jace, looking for a fetch land. Nice. So send those, 
swing. Do we have the Goseju or not? I imagine they do. Yeah. Oh, Odawara. Okay. That's kind of just fine. I don't think I care about that too much. Yeah, I think that's just fine. I'm gonna shuffle because I have some cards that I don't care for. The fairy means I cannot get blasted, which is nice. Also, Throws of Chaos doesn't do anything at all. I'm pretty sure that this is locked up now. Plus here, Brainstorm. Yeah, this is this is officially locked up now. Stoneforge even gets to shuffle. That's value. All right, do you have Bosage or something? Suit up the, uh, the sword. See if my opponent does anything. They do have, what is another Odawara? Soken Sun. That's fine, it doesn't matter. I think th this game is just locked up now. Obviously their interaction is extremely limited, right? Like there's uh, the, the deck building restriction, the, this, uh, the deck building restriction of a deck like this is just so high. Also, like we don't even die if my opponent were able to assemble their combo. So <laughs> that's funny. Um, so I could minus on the token. I guess I could just minus with Jace and think that I, Kaldra here, swing. Forcing them to interact at instance at sorcery speed is just so good for me. Yeah. Game number three. Matchups feels slightly better after I cut all my garbage cards for, you know, cards that do stuff. Shout out to Sanctifier and Beck, an absolute beating in that matchup. I don't want to change anything on the draw. I'm a little bit less excited about Jace, but the problem is I don't really have anything that I'm more excited about. So... It's just kind of what it is. Yep, I think so. All right, game number three. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, no counter magic. I think I'm going to go to six. And now to five. This hand's solid, though. So we're going to keep this. Bottom. Bottom. That's the turn. Okay. So this that means the Draco plant's not that good. I really want to find a land. I really want to find a land here. Rest in peace would be a good draw as well. I think I'm gonna slam the Stoneforge on turn two. I found the Triumph. Okay, because I found it exactly a tap land, I'm gonna pass. But if I hadn't found a tap land, um, I would have. Oh, that's a problem. Well, Stoneforge, here we go. <laughs> um, so my opponent blasts me. I think I still will go for Feast and Famine. And now I really have to find a land. The good thing is that Boseju doesn't work with Throws of Chaos. So it only only works with uh, the actual spell. So they need to have Calibrated Blast specifically. It's a land. So I guess if they have the Blast, I'm dead. So I'm going to go for this. Just find Batter Skull here. So it needs to be exactly Blast right now. Yep. And they can't whiff. So they need to hit a 15. They found Throws of Chaos. Yeah, so that's a whiff. That means that I'm not necessarily dead unless they have another Calibrated Blast. And then now if they flash back the Blast, I get to end step Batter Skull. Yeah, so now I'm just going to end step put Batter Skull into play. They don't have a blocker, so I'm just I'm just going to jam. Here's my thing. Interesting that they don't they didn't do it in response there. I think it was it would have been better for them to do it in response because if they whiff, um they have to yeah, so they're just gonna flash back the blast. But now if they if they reveal a blast off of these, now they can't kill the Stoneforge. So they deal 15. 15 goes face, swing. And now we cross our fingers. That they don't have exactly another calibrator blast. <laughs> Alright. Uh yeah. Counter that one. <laughs> That's funny. Do you have the blast? Looks like they don't. I just don't get this deck, man. I just just don't. Poseidon, you my batter skull. Well, I think there's nothing I can do there. So if I find a land, I get to kill them with the colonnade attack. But this is, I mean, this is probably good play from my opponent. Land, dispute. Okay. So I think I'm just gonna attack. This puts my opponent down to one. Now that's it, matter. Because I can solitude my own Stoneforge. I don't think that matters though. So I'm just I'm just gonna. Uh, I guess I could have made a token. I, it, it's probably not going to matter. 
The good thing is that now Bosage just doesn't do anything, right? Because it can only tap for pain life. And if they don't tap to pay life, I just have double counter magic. So this is locked up now. Yes, that's not lethal. Definitely should have made a token though. 100% should have made a token. Opponent says GG's. GG's opponent. Yeah, this deck is all the rage right now. And I faced it three times in three leagues. All three times I beat it. So <laughs> um, I don't know if it's bad of, or they, my opponent has been getting lucky, but like building your entire deck against uh, as a deck that can get unlucky just feels like, I don't know. I don't know if that's where you want to be. Anyway, um, see you next round. Round number three. All right, keep this hand. We got turn one interaction, or we can go turn one tap land, turn two play Hawk. Huh, all right. Um, I think I'm playing a Hawk. Do you want to counterspell this? <laughs> uh, we're only going to get one Hawk here, obviously. We, there's no need for us to go to this card. So there we go. But if my opponent has the fairy, we can pressure the fairy this way. It's not the best pressure I've ever seen, but. Um, hmm. Do I want to play my own Teferi? That's probably going to force some form of interaction. Or do I want to play Sword of Fire and Ice? I think I want to slam a 3 drop here. The question is which one? I think it's going to be the Sword. I think I care less about the Sword being countered than I do care about the Teferi being countered. Esper. Alright, baby. My opponent gets scammed into thinking that Esper is a, reason is a reasonable game. A reasonable deck now. So, gonna slam it to Fairy. Minus, get our card. Uh, they can't attack with either one of these, so I think I'm just gonna play this Hollow Fountain tapped and say go. Ooh, Whisper Triumph. Oh, Band? Huh. So I guess they have that for Jace. Okay. I mean, if I wanted to, I could just bounce the Jace with Otawara. Probably slamming my own Jace is better, though. This is probably better. Um, yeah, so let's go Mystic Gate. And the idea is, so if my opponent attempts to kill my Jace with uh, Colonnade, we don't really care because we can just pitch to the March. So ship that, ship that. And Squadron Hawk is gonna attack the Jace. The only problem now is that we, we have so much card advantage that we're Probably gonna have to go to this card. Pretty brutal if you ask me. Drown Catacomb. Let's go. <laughs> okay, the opponent is not attacking with Colonnade apparently. I wonder if they're gonna they're trying to prismatic ending for four. That seems to be the case. Yep. Ending for four kinda sucks, but it's also sort of fine. Um there's another ending on top. So I think I wanna shuffle that away. And I'm going to Oh, I thought I had my own... Whoops, I thought I had my own colonnade. That was obviously stupid. Play a hawk. Draw two hawks. And I'm gonna attack Jace. Hmm. So if I play another hawk... Eh, I think two hawks is fine. My opponent pluses Jace. Yeah, I guess I just have to assume that they're gonna plus Jace, so I have to play another one. Which makes things a little bit awkward. Man, it kind of sucks that I have not drawn... A single form of interaction. Like if my opponent has a sweeper here, we may be in that shape. I guess it can't really be too bad because I can just haul attack the Jace down. <clears throat> yeah, there's the sweeper. Oh. Yeah. I mean that's what was giving me the advantage. So that's a little bit rough. I wonder if I should just have added Ugh, Vomit. At least I get to kill the Jace now. But at what cost? Actually, should I go face? No, I shouldn't go face because uh, if I if I go face, then my opponent, like next turn, they just block with this. So it's a big pickup. Big pickup. Pass the turn. We have access to Odawara. We have access to Solitude. We can just make a token with Castle Arden Veil. Where are my counter spells? <laughs> I have Spell Beavers, four counter spells, three Archmage's Charm. We somehow managed to find none. An opponent has mana for enough for double memory deluge. Kind of a beating. Here at the main area. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. <sighs> Literally nothing I can do. 
Yeah, our draw just did not line up particularly well. So we just continue falling further and further behind. I think I'm gonna attack them and ignore Teferi. Just gonna try to race race my opponent. Sack a creature, create a one one. I'm considering Odawara here. But I think the flying doesn't really do anything. I could have solituded, but then I can't make a token. Maybe that was a good spot to to play the solitude though. Make a token. Ugh. Bomb it. Just nothing. <laughs> over and over, just find absolutely nothing. Uh, one, two, three, four. Ugh, this is so bad. I'm just gonna concede. I, I think I'd rather just have more time uh, to to finish the other matches. Prismatic endings are gonna go. Disputes are coming in. Fluster spell appears. Feast and famine. And I think I kind of like spreading seas. Um, March seems okay to destroy creature lands, but that's about it. Like I, I'm bringing in spreading seas, so that's probably better to kill creature lands. So let's cut the marches. Soul to is an instant speed threat. And do I just want to get rid of one of this? Probably want to get rid of Kaldra. Kaldra is probably my worst, my worst equipment. Okay, so <laughs> double mulligan and only two lands, so we're just gonna ship it. Uh, this is not bad, however. So let's keep this. And I think I'm gonna send the hallowed fountain. Play this hawk on two. Boom, boom. Boom. Coco. And I think I'm gonna put two hawks into play. I think that's a reasonable enough clock. Okay. And I think I hold on to the other to the other cocos. I guess here they can Archmage's Charm to draw two, but if they do they go to discard, so I'm probably okay with that. Yep. Yeah. So they draw two, up to nine, fetch on end step, get a tap land, untap. They hold have to go to this card. I wonder if they kept Supreme Verdict. That would be very interesting. Discarding to Fairy Hero, let's go. Pass the turn. I'm probably never gonna play this sword until it's safe to tap out. Uh, maybe I should have let that resolve actually, because of the same reason of what happened last turn. Yeah, I should probably let that resolve. My opponent would have would have had to go to this card once again. That was that was a mistake, I think. So much counter magic. Swing. I think two two cocos is the is the sweet spot. I don't think I want to extend any more than that. I kind of need an answer to that colonnade, actually. That's not it. I guess I can technically tap out for this now, and I'm holding up double counter spell. Now next turn we can get sort of fire nice going. So I'm gonna counter spell this, and then I'm probably gonna pierce. Oh, okay, interesting. Well. You're doing this, baby. What do you got, opponent? Nothing. Just have nothing. You're just gonna let this sword hit you. I'm okay with this. And just an argument for dropping the fairy there. I'm gonna play the fairy now, so if my opponent wants to counter it, they have to tap out of colony, which is lethal. <clears throat> they have cryptic? Oh, solitude. Um, I'm gonna have to dispute that one. Is this good enough? It is. Sweet. All right, game three. I think this plan is solid. We have three answers to colonnade. I guess the soldiers are also answers to colonnade. Yeah, so this is just fine. I think this is just fine. Game number three. This hand is very greedy. We have two things. Ugh. I'm gonna keep it, but I'm not excited about this hand at all. Oh man. Ugh. Land please and thank you. I deserve this. I deserve every bit of this. I deserve every bit of this. So I think I'm gonna pitch this solitude. All right. I think we lose now. Maybe like a miracle can happen and I can like get back from, yeah, my opponent should not play anything. Maybe a miracle happens and I can get back from like one miss land drop, but two miss land drops is just too much. I don't think I can come back from this. Yeah, this is, this is just game now. <sighs> Maybe I should have just shipped this hand, I don't know. My opponent should not counter this. Like, I'm, I'm ecstatic to have traded that. It probably won't matter if my opponent just slams a Teferi or a Jace, but if they don't, 
because I was gonna have to go to this card if I wanted to like find anything with Scrapper Hawk. So, the fairy, nope, that one's good. They should minus, they plus. Okay, probably can't punish my opponent here, but it's a land. Thoughtsies, <laughs> trust the Thoughtsies, love it. Take this Stone Forge. Okay, uh, I mean I'm gonna slam this Teferi like it's nothing else I can do. So it just resolves. Wow, how do they have so many cards and it just resolves? Flashback Thoughtsies. Oh, because they're gonna flashback Thoughtsies and they're gonna Teferi minus and Snabby and. They're gonna have access to Snapcaster. I mean, I, that doesn't work actually though, because we have Teferi, never mind. I'm an idiot. They should probably still do it though. Yeah, it's, it's just too much value. And it's not like I'm really gaining anything by just passing the turn. All of my cards are dead. Stoneforge is what I'm looking for here. All right, that plays. Next turn, but that maybe plays. That's a way to balance this thing. So did the opponent find hero? Looks like they did, yep. Yeah, um, I don't think you can really win after having to discard to hand size twice, unfortunately for me. Uh, for five, so Spell Pierce doesn't stop this. I guess I'm just gonna pass the turn. Hoping opponent's got nothing, which is very unlikely. And I'm just gonna Odawara the Time Raveler on my opponent's hand step, which still leaves me with a pretty huge problem which is this bad boy so i think we're just done so here yeah opponent's just gonna get back memory deluge it's gonna flash back right now if they want to just draw two with charm it's just too much at this point i think if we had not missed land drops maybe we could have had a shot but that's that's just not what happened <laughs> that is not what happened land drops were indeed missed all right seen enough seen enough Four color, man. Like, my opponent is so greedy, uh, but it didn't matter. All right, see you next round. Round number four, and I think I'm keeping this. Turn one, call, turn two, Stoneforge. Kind of really like the fact that I have, I get all of my secret coasts out of the way. Feels nice. Uh, with my opponent doing steam, I mean, I guess they could just be playing opt, right? Or consider, I guess. So obviously they could be playing, um, they could be playing uh, Lightning Bolt, which is very likely what's going to happen here. But I think I'm going to go for Sword of Fire and Ice. Is my Stoneforge dead? No, they did. Oh, oh, that's what's up. Well, Teferino, please come to my rescue. Pitching Val and Outburst. Okay, Street Wraith, just cycling main phase for no reason whatsoever. Teferi. Okay. It's not the worst. Uh, obviously, it sucks that I have. Oh, why did I attack? I guess I'm not gonna sort of fire nice anyway. So we lose to outburst into counterspell, and with my opponent beating outburst, I'm assuming that they have an outburst already. Should probably still not have attacked. Yeah, I'm like I'm super punished for attacking there now. Should have 500% not attacked. Like I, I could be connecting with with uh, Sophie this turn. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that one's good. Um, so I guess I just play this and hope that they don't have force on this very turn. Like it, it doesn't get easier for me, right? Like, as my opponent does have the force, I'm just getting wrecked anyway next turn. So uh, honestly, like, what should have happened? I should have drawn the Teferi the previous turn, but now it's just too late. Grief. Just gonna concede here again. Like, we just got a little bit unlucky. Like drawing the card that does literally nothing. Um, obviously we didn't know that when I kept the hand, but that's how it goes sometimes. <sighs> Sanctifier is just so weird in this matchup, because it doesn't really stop anything from happening. Like, it exiles... Yeah, I, I just don't think it's very good. Like, I don't think it's necessarily better than a squad on Hawk. This attacks in the air, at least, right? This attacks through Grief. That's the only thing that it does. How do we, like, Feast and Famine? I kind of think it's okay. Is it better than Fire and Ice? I don't think I want both swords. I don't think it's better than Fire and Ice. On the play, ugh, this hands, man. This is brutal. I, I think I have to keep here. The hand is just too good if it finds any land whatsoever. I think I just have to keep here. And if my opponent griefs, I can pitch Solitude Exile the Grief in response, and then I just have a Solitude sitting in the graveyard. 
Also, if I do hit uh, runner runner land, I think I'm in really good shape. Opponent moves to six. So we just gotta get a little bit lucky here. Just gotta get a little bit lucky here. Land. Easiest land of my life. I'm gonna slam this Stoneforge Mystic. Slam it. And I think... Am I getting Kaldra here? I think I'm just getting Fire Ice. See, I wonder... I wonder if game would could have turned around. I don't think it would have turned around last turn, but like the one point of damage wasn't worth it. Like it, it was a misclick, but then thinking about it, I thought it, it was an okay attack, but in reality, it was just terrible. Grief. So my opponent's gonna get... Um, they're gonna get um, my Teferi anyways, because it's the best card in the hand, so I'd rather do this. So now I have Solitude in my graveyard. If they leave it in, I get like a free exile effect. And it also gets rid of, rid of the grief for good, which is nice. Opponent gets rid of the Sophie, which is bad for me, obviously. But now this is a good attack, so there's that. <laughs> we do have double counter spell here. I don't think that matters particularly much. Wait, what? But why? They literally know my hand. They just won the 2-2? Two -two? Huh. Okay. I'm very surprised by that play. Okay, whatever. I'll take it. But now they attack. Okay. Curator of Mysteries. Unfortunately, I have to counter that. Caldra? Colonnade. Okay, you can't block this thing. <sighs> this is pretty brutal. The problem is if I let the Grief take my Teferi, then I would, have be, I would find myself in a spot where there, I just can't do anything. Now I can't even counter a Living End. At least the living in is not super good. And it's not the worst living in, but it's also not the best one either. I get back Solitude, Exile the Curator of Mysteries. Opponent gets a Street Wraith and a Stripped Riverwinder. That's not the worst. Okay. Why do this before attacking? I don't know. They don't cast Living End? They did reveal the Living End. Why would they not cast it? They just want to raise me? Well, now what we do is we just chump block the Shardless Agent. And now they can't leave in end anymore. Because I get back the Stoneforge and then Kaldra gets rid of all their stuff. So now I don't think they have very good attacks. Being leaving it. So I'll block. I think I block with Colonnade. I think here we block with Colonnade. Opponent then leaving ends. But then we just untap in Verdict. So activate Colonnade. I assume they're gonna let me go to blocks here. Agent down. Oh, they just leaving in on end step here? What a weird game. What a weird game. Oh, the endurance. Oh no, they, huh. Well, yeah, that resolves. So we kill here, we take. So whatever they rearrange doesn't matter. Can I survive this turn? We're going to be at a virtual 9, and we're going to be able to have 3 blockers. So we block, 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 and tap Wrath, and tap Skull. That's the plan? It's a plan, okay. It is indeed a plan. And I guess if they attack with Curator, am I supposed to just take it? They serve with everything. So since they serve with everything, what if I activate Colonnade, trade with Curator, trade with Architect, Chump, Riverwinder, take five, gain... I guess I have to Wrath anyway. So I'm going to have to Wrath anyway. So I lose to Endurance. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I lose to Endurance. Uh, is there anything I can do about Endurance? Not really. Could I have saved it point of damage last turn? I think I could have. <laughs> Subtlety. Yeah, whatever. Like, it, it just doesn't matter. Um, could I have saved point of damage? I think if, if I throw away the Colonnade, I could have saved the point of damage. But if I throw away the Colonnade, I lose to the Subtlety anyway, except over the course of two turns. So I guess I get one more draw step. But I have one less Colonnade, so... Uh, I could have drawn exactly. Yeah, that would have that would have been able. That would have allowed me to chump. That's pretty brutal. That's pretty brutal. All right. See you for the last round. All right. Last game. Last match. I guess. Uh, I think I keep this in. 
Uh, we're on the play, so we're going to be able to go turn to Hawk. The question now is what hand do I want to lead on? I think I'm going to lead on Marsh Flats so we can go find um, the Triome. If I'm playing against the Blood Moon deck, we get a little bit punished because then I'm not going to be able to have Charm on three. So maybe that's a reason to go for Hollow Fountain. Oh, come on. Is this another combo deck? Jesus. I played two leagues today and it's just all combo decks. <laughs> I played against mono combo decks today. I guess I played against the Esper Control deck. I guess it was, it was actual four colors. Never mind. Chalice. Oh, we are playing against the Blood Moon deck. That's funny. Um, I think I probably value having the white source over over having charm mana. Maybe that's wrong, and I should just be, and I should just be doing the thing. Well, I feel very smart right now. Zwing, squad on hawk. This chalice is kind of brutal, particularly if my opponent has like a Chandra or something here. I wonder if they're main decking something like Anger of the Gods. <laughs> Spike Field Cave gets countered by their Chalice, which is funny. Uh, yep. Can't do anything about that one. So now we do want to draw our Prismatic Ending. Just mono, good old Mono Red Prison. Good old Mono Red Prison. Haven't seen this deck in a minute. I can't imagine it's good anymore, right? Though, you know, who's, look who's talking, I guess. <laughs> Let me get some tokens. Can I find a White Source? Prismatic Ending. <sighs> It's not the worst, so I think I want to ending. I think I want to ending the moon because it just gives me so many more potential draws. Don't care about the chalice too much. This is literally the only spell in my entire deck that the chalice does anything about, so not particularly worried about that. Now it's going to be a matter of whether I want to go for double blue or double white. I think with the current hand, I'm going to fetch for basic planes if my opponent obtains to blood me again. Can attack me some elementals. Seems fine. What you got, opponent? What you got? Chandra. Okay, so they have to plus here. Minus he doesn't do anything. Plus for a shock. Fury! <laughs> Their last two cards are Fury plus Red card. Wow. All right, opponent, you're you're just better than I am. Opponent is just better. Opponent is just better. Um, can we beat this Chandra? So the only way to beat this Chandra is if my opponent just attacks their tokens into my Solitude for no reason. Hey, they exile my planes. Wait, do I only have one basic planes? I do only have one basic place. Okay, good to know. And I think I'm exiling the Pyromancer. Because I'm gonna fetch, like it just doesn't change the block. Magus. So we can kill that if we want to, think uh, by pitch solituding. Another another prismatic ending would be interesting. Cause if we ending the Insane Bridge, we can then clock Chandra. We can be in good shape. The great creator. Yeah, I was really planning on I was really planning on drawing two here, but I'm not gonna be able to. Chalice actually mattered. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, I guess maybe my opponent will plus. And if my opponent pluses, they give me a chance at another draw. They should just minus and get the emblem, right? Like they're just gonna kill me. Yeah, okay, so they're just gonna kill me eventually, right? Like it just doesn't matter when I kill them because I can't raise them. And yeah. So Sanctifier is probably okay, and that's about it, really. Ah, oh, I also had March. I totally forgot about March. Yeah, that would have also been pretty solid. So I, I do think, even though my opponent showed me Chalice, I do think I still want the Pierces. Prismatic Endings, Marches, all of these seem fine. Kind of not super hot on Sa Sanctifier, to be honest. Like, I, it's just not doing anything. Like, they have no Graveyard Synergies, and it's, it's impossible to cast under Magus or Blood Moon, so... Just not doing anything for me. Just minus it to fairy. Uh, okay, keep this hand. And I think I'm gonna go turn one uh, flooded strand because if I find another fetch land, I'm gonna want to be able to fetch for basic monkey. I'm gonna go for the basic planes here, even though I have the Archmage's Charm in hand. And the reason for that being that oh, I'm just gonna go to Um This enables my prismatic endings. Also, if they moon me here, I can just activate this to put Battle Skull in play. Just not nothing. 
Here I'm just gonna solitude, uh, pitch solitude to kill. Oh, come on. Pitching Desperate Ritual. Pitching Desperate Ritual is interesting. So I'm gonna wait until attack step to kill the monkey. The reason for that is so my opponent doesn't go land into second monkey and they can dash. Monkey die, animal violence, no land. Please play no land. Ugh, play land. Land for me. Sadness. Complete and total sadness. Dash the monkey. Okay. Maybe I'm supposed to... Maybe I'm supposed to... <laughs> I was gonna say maybe I'm supposed to pitch the fairy there instead of the second solitude, but... Like, I, I can only two for one myself so many times, right? Desperate ritual into whatever, doesn't matter. I can't, I can't beat it. <laughs> whatever they're ritualing into, this does not matter. Can't beat it without lands. All right, so um, that's five mana. That's very scary. I guess I can technically bounce this with the fairy. Like, this is just garbage time, right? Like, I, I, I have so much time that I can, so much, so many things that I need to beat. <laughs> right on time all right i've seen enough seen enough and here we are for the wrap up and it felt like this deck has aged like uh, milk yes this deck did not feel very good uh, obviously the fact that squadron hawk was rarely ever a card <laughs> like even though i was drawing four of them didn't matter because either my opponent's control decks were going bigger than i was and my opponent's combo decks were interacting with my creatures in very, very easy ways. Or even uh, my opponent had Fury <laughs> against the mono red deck. So um, nothing about my deck felt like it was doing anything particularly powerful. Stoneforge Mystic remains a good card, but only because of the synergy with the Hammer deck, right? Like when you are having Stoneforge Mystic not as the core part of your game plan, but also but only as an engine piece or like a way to help your deck function uh, while giving you value, it is much, much better than when you're using Stoneforge Mystic to go get like Sword of Fire and Ice or like cards that basically require for the Stoneforge Mystic to survive in order to achieve anything at all. So we did get paired against the Creativity deck, which went completely over the top of what we were doing, like never cared about anything. And they just had like a couple of removal spells for my Stoneforge Mystics and I was completely out <laughs> as soon as that happened. Um, so that was very rough. We also were very clunky. We missed a gazillion land drops. Um, at the same time, like I don't think that we can really afford to play more lands. In the past, decks like this have played like 25 lands and stuff like that. But those decks were banned and they were playing Uro, right? So that's a very good reason to want to be playing more lands. Here, we don't really have particularly uh, good ways of using the extra mana that we may have access to. And not only that, but by design, our deck is in a way, in, in a spot where it wants spells because it's sort of like a tempo slash control deck. But at the same time, like you need creatures in play in order to activate your equipment. And then also your equipment just kind of sucks. <laughs> so all in all, it felt like this deck was very poorly positioned against literally anything that my opponents were doing. Um... I don't think there were very many spots where I could have done anything different. The only thing I could see is from the deck building standpoint, having access to like a breeding pool or like some other extra shock land. That's something that the, the blue white control decks would do. They would play like a rogue in triumph and then maybe a breeding pool. And that way you can very easily splash a fourth color that would allow you to uh, maybe prismatic getting for X equals four. So that's one of the things that you could consider. I just don't think that that's particularly relevant. Also, just all, all in all, like my cards felt not necessarily weak because this, this is, these are obviously strong cards. They just felt like I was they were supporting a game plan that was just not particularly strong. So you know these are all support cards, and you want to have them. They're powerful support cards, obviously, and you want to help them. Um, they're there to help you enact your game plan, but when your game plan is just very easily interacted with or extremely mana hungry while equipping swords and stuff, um, it's just not necessarily worth pursuing. So I don't recommend this deck. I think that you could work on it and you could maybe like get a 3-2 or something. Um, I think it's just that. I, I just don't think that it, it just works out. It, I don't think it has aged poorly and it has aged like milk. 
Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video series, uh, let me know in the comments down below because uh, I would love to know what people are thinking about it. This is an idea that I had a while ago and we're finally bringing it to fruition. Uh, but if you did enjoy it, let me know in the comments and hit the like and subscribe button while you're at it. And as I was saying earlier, if you're interested in coaching or maybe even uh, doing a donation deck list, you can find all the information you may need in the description of the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.